joining us right now on the phone line all the way out of Trinidad and Tobago is David John from W Connection. He's the president of W Connection. David, good morning. Yeah, good morning. It's David John. Good morning to Antigua. Good morning to the, your, your listeners throughout the Caribbean. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on. Right. Um, now, let's, in, in terms of W Connection right now, how long has the club been in existence? Well, uh, January this year, we were 16 years old as a professional outfit. So we've been around a while. <laughs> we, 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 are, we are fast becoming teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, in, 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 for W Connection, you have moved on now to the next round of matches in the CFU Champion of Champions. Do you see the, the standard, and you've been there on a number of occasions, but do you see the standard in the CFU club-wise getting harder? Yes, of course. I mean, um, with the prestigious CONCACAF Champions League, which has been rebranded, I think, four or five years ago by CONCACAF, and the and the, the desire for Caribbean teams to get into that prestigious tournament, I think the standard of, of Caribbean football is improving at club level. I think some efforts have been put in by various clubs throughout the region to 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 participate in the CONCACAF Champions League, and by, by extension, the we are trying to raise the standards. Um, this year's competition so far has been okay for us. Um, and um, we see CFU have put in a, a bit more effort into to raising the standard of the competition in terms of the referees and the match organization and so on. So, yes, I think the cabin football is rising uh, to the point where we want it to be. No, just looking at, at at your local setting, the local club in in the, the local league in Trinidad, the TNT Pro League. Um, I know for many years, having lived in Trinidad at one time, too, the the numbers coming through the turnstile at, to, to watch matches in that league um, isn't is what we would say isn't anything to write home about. Has there been an improvement in that? No, well, obviously um, the league has it's legend league still. Um, yes. Still. Professional football is 16 years old in San Antonio. We don't get the amount of people coming through the turn style for league games, but in cup games, we tend to have a decent attendance. Uh, for some reason, um, yes, we we have a lot of football fans here, but sometimes I wonder if we are football loving public. But having said that, I think um, the league remains steady and the standard of the league has improved over the years. No, because the league seems to be, it, it, a lot of countries or a lot of players in the region look to use the TNT Pro League as a stepping stone to get into the USL and, and, and further leagues internationally. Yes, of course. I mean, um, the only way for the Caribbean to, to survive and the Caribbean to compete is that we must have professional football in the Caribbean. Um, Trinidad Bigo has a professional league. Um, and you realize that the, the standard of the average player has improved tremendously over the years. Um, the Caribbean is the last place to go professional, and that's why I'm looking for a Caribbean professional league. Um, um, we at the Connection have seen the benefits of professional football in terms of the, the tactical awareness of the players, the fitness of the players, and, and the attitude of the players improving. Yes, we have a long way to go, but um, the only way for the Caribbean to compete is to be professional. The rest of the world is professional, so if you have competed with the likes of Mexico, USA, Costa Rica, Panama, um, the only way is that we must have a Caribbean professional league. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because when you get to a certain level in, in from the CFU and then move on to face the bigger clubs in CONCACAF, you are at a disadvantage because of the professionalized setup that a lot of those teams would have, aren't you? Of course, of course. Um, when you look at professional football in, 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 in Mexico, uh, how old it is, and the kind of money and the kind of resources that they have, the kind of stadium, the kind of facility, the kind of youth programs and so on that they have, it's, it's difficult to compete at the Caribbean when you are present, still an um, uh, amateur. You look at the kind of level of investment in the major league soccer, I mean, the expansion of teams. I mean, there are 20 teams in, in the MLS now, and they propose by 2020 to have 24 teams. I mean, they've grown at a phenomenal rate, and the level of investment in, in, in U.S. soccer and, and Major League soccer um, is something that we are startled about in the Caribbean, and if we don't start to do it now, we definitely cannot compete.
You you recently hosted the the the, the, the a zone of the CFU Club Champions and um, Waterhouse of Jamaica had you know well it is said now that they had flight arrangement problems. Do you find that that is a regular thing can, that hinders a lot of clubs in in the region in terms of flight arrangements getting to and from countries? I think the question is funding. I mean, and 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 we all know that traveling for the region could be very expensive. Um, and for some reason, I don't see why flying from Jamaica to Trinidad or from Antigua to Trinidad is much more expensive than flying from Trinidad to Miami. You know, it, it is mind-boggling. Uh, you know, I, I can travel to Miami for a cheaper fare than travel from Trinidad to Saint Lucia. Um, and that is something that for Canadian governments to look at, and for for, for regional integration to improve, we must re- we must review the cost of airfares for the region. But coming back to your question of um, Jamaican team not turning up and so on, it, it all comes down to funding, and it's very expensive to run a professional football club in the Caribbean, uh, far less uh, an amateur team or a semi-professional team trying to get their Caribbean championship, and there is no prize money, so, and and therefore. It remains difficult for a lot of teams in the region. Um, you, you know, what did you think of, of our local club SAP? Well, I mean, um, they try to play football. Um, they they are a team on the up. Um, I think they are a bit naive in terms of the way they defend or the, the way they approach the game. That does not mean to say that they don't have talent. I think the difference between W Connection and SAP is the, is the fact that. We are a professional team and they are amateur. We are, we are in the game 24 7, um, and they are not. Um, the other thing, staff is probably was in pre season and we were probably mid to end season. So they expect that our fitness would have been better, our form would have been better, our confidence would have been better. And having been Caribbean champions four times, that alone augurs well for us as a club. That coming into a tournament like this for the first time would, would have been a bit inexperienced. And um, an experience comes for a lot in, in football. Um, but I think the main difference was us being on the game 24 7 as opposed to staff not being on the game 24 7. It, 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 is, it, it has been said that you were um, quite impressed by SAP's goalkeeper, Malvin James. Yes, he had a good tournament. He had a good tournament. Um, he did relatively well in, in my estimation. Um, for me to pronounce on him, I would have to see him um, a bit more often, but from the games that I saw him, he was he was pretty decent. Let, let me you now from from the local perspective. Um, Richard Hart, the Trinidad Tobago head coach, has said that the the late finishing of the Pro, TNT Pro League is hampering his preparation. Do you agree with that? Well, obviously, um, the national team has a program, and, and and the coach has to look out for himself. I think the delay in the in, in the in the TT Pro League uh, finishing is the fact that we are hosting the final round of the CFU tournament, so the Pro League has to be pushed back by a week, a week to to, to ten days. Um, yes, it may have affect, um, affected his preparation or his thinking, um, but I think um, we stand ready right, as a club. We stand ready right to support the national coach and the national program because a good showing in the Gold Cup is very important. So, uh, I mean, I can sympathize and understand where Steve Hart is coming from. But at the same time, um, we have no control over the situation. Um, are there any changes you would like to see happen in the TNT Pro League? I mean, there are a lot of things, on, there are a lot of discussions on the table as it, uh, as it relates to uh, the dynamics and changes that we want to expect in TNT Pro League that I do want to pronounce on as as yet, there's a, there's, there has been some talk about uh, changing the, the season back to the original season. Um, that is still in a, a discussion stage, and, and, and I would not like to pronounce on that as yet. Um, but yes, there are things that we, we, we can change. Having been in the game for 16 years, and um, for sure, we love to see community grounds. Um, we like to see football go back into the community. That's uh, something that we have been talking about for, for the last five, six, seven years. I think professional football, really community-based, you look at England, you know, it seems are more community and tongue-based kind of thing. Um, and that's for sure I would like to see happening in professional football, that, that football goes back to the community. Hi, David. David? Yeah? Hi, yeah. Nito here, man. How are you? I'm right. 
Okay, um, just to get back a little bit to the, the, the club championships, looking at uh, W Connection stats in the first round of the of the championships, you, you guys would have scored a lot of goals. I think you twice scored seven, um, once against SAP and I think against Guyana, Defence Force or something like that. Um, that has obviously worked for you throughout the tournament. But do you see it getting increasingly difficult to score um, going forward, knowing that you're going to be playing against better teams who are who are better prepared defensively? Well, we expect the final round to be to, to be a lot more difficult than than the first round. Um, obviously, the top four teams in the Caribbean competing. I mean, we we have had a good run in terms of scoring goals. Um, Hashimasi has been outstanding in, in those two games. That he has got six goals and to be five assists, and he's a player that we've been looking forward to, to keep giving us goals. Um, we intend to play offensive. We intend to play offensive in terms of wanting to win the Caribbean Championship and give a good showing, um, because ultimately we want to qualify for the CONCACAF Champions League. Our first step, though, is to qualify for the Champions League by winning the semi-final, and then we'll take the, fi- the final as it comes. Um, but yes, we expect the oppositions to be a lot more difficult in the final round, but we hope that we can get the results. In, no, it, it can't, let, let's just look look at it regionally now. Um, do you see that the gap years ago, Trinidad and J- Tobago and Jamaica were the were the regional powerhouses? Do you see the gap closing from other countries though? Of course, of course. I mean, if you look at the City Pro League, a lot of Caribbean players playing with the City Pro people from Saint Kitts, people from Saint Lucia, people from Guyana, people from Suriname uh, competing in the City Pro League. There are a lot of more Caribbean players playing in the MLS and playing in the E-League and playing in the USL. So obviously the players in the region are getting more exposure. Um, and the more exposure the players get is the stronger the national team will be. Um, the role of football is no longer, uh, 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 I should say, it's a small village, so to speak. And um, I mean, technology is available, coaching experiences are available. There are, there are people outside of Trinidad and Tobago, outside of the region, coaching uh, club teams and national teams in the region. So obviously, the gap is closing. Um, systems are readily available. Uh, tactics are readily available on the internet, on videos. Um, people are being trained in Europe and all that stuff like that. So it makes the game and the competitiveness of the game a lot closer. Um, the gaps in national teams worldwide is closing and, and the Caribbean is no different. Uh, last question to you concerning the, the, the state of football in, in, in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, we know that the TTFA is in a financial bind right now. Do you see that hampering the, the progress of the TNT Pro League? It hampers not only the TNT Pro League, but it hampers the whole national team effort. Um, for us to compete at international level, for us to compete with the likes of Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica, Honduras, and the rest of the region, um, we need to be playing on international windows. If we don't have a, a stable financial organization, it will impact on the friendly internationals. So we would not be able to play on friendly international um, dates as, as outlined by FIFA, and, and that's not a good thing. I think it's very difficult for us going into the Gold Cup and having just played one game against Panama and possibly one game that is coming up sometime in June. That's not ideal preparation when you're going to compete at the highest level regionally. Um, one has to understand that we are no longer competing with nations in the Caribbean, but we're competing with the world. Because if we want to play CONCACAF Champions League, for example, we're going to compete with teams from Mexico. But ultimately, if we win the CONCACAF Champions League, we're going to compete with teams like Barcelona, Manchester United, Juventus, whoever wins the European Champions League, or Real Madrid. So we have to stop looking at we're competing against the Caribbean and we're competing against the world. And if our players want to play football at the highest level, they are competing against the rules. So, yes, it will affect, it will affect Trinidad and Tobago. All right. You know what, Rich? Um, no, before, b- before you go, um, you, you did mention in terms of the gap closing going into the final round, you're playing against teams. Uh, the, f- the four top teams will contest the final round. Uh, in light of that, though, how important is it that your, your key players, your, you mentioned your top goal scorer, and how important is it that key players step up to the plate and the coaching as well uh, has to be on key. T- talk to me a little bit about that. Um, yes, it's very important. I mean, um, for us as an organization, and us for Trinidad Tobago and the CC Pro League, we're not only representing W Connection, but we're representing Trinidad Tobago football and by extension the CC Pro League. 
we have a very good history of, of playing in Caribbean football and and, 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 and and having a good run. And we have, we want to be back in the Champions League because that is the highest level of club football in our region, which is the CONCACAF Champions League. So it's very important that the players step up to the plate. It's very important that the players show good form. It's very important that the players... Um, perform well because a lot of people will be looking at this card and finals and ultimately come to have Champions League for possible players uh, for the future and it's very important that our key players like Kashi Masi and Mikael Williams and younger ones like Jamal Williams and Mikael Benjamin and Alvin June and, and, and the, whole ba- the, whole, the whole bunch of players come to the, pa- come to the party and, and perform well so to speak um, so it's very very important for us um, it's very also it's very important for us in terms of going into the CONCACAF Champions League and representing the region in a, in a proper manner. So we are definitely taking the tournament very seriously. Finally, finally though, um, in terms of it's an opportunity for for clubs from across the Caribbean to to get together, not only play football, but to also network. What sort of networking takes place at, at, at these tournaments? Do people like yourself, the presidents, the managers, take the time to speak to other clubs and get a feel of what is going on in in the different territories? I, I'm happy to say that I met with the president of SAP here and, 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 and we chatted a bit about how he could improve his organization and improve his team. Um, we spent about 15, 20 minutes together. I think it's important that we in the region come together because, you know, for far too long we have been very insular in our thinking, both in Western East cricket and both in, 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 in Western East football, so to speak. I think we have a professional football league here and we have had it for, for, for 15, 16 years. So obviously, we will know a lot more about professional football as opposed to Antigua or Barbados or, or even Jamaica. And if we can pass our knowledge on, it is only going to help the region. I think it's important for us to understand that if we compete against the region and we compete against mediocre teams, how do we expect our football to improve? So I think for far too long, we have been very insular in our approach. And unless we network both as regional associations and and even governments to, to help improve um, the standard of playing both cricket and football, we are going nowhere. I was happy to see that the regional governments have come together with the West Indies Cricket Board to find a solution to West Indies Cricket, which has been something that we have cherished and spent on and, and left a legacy and it's sad to see where it is today. Um, so in terms of football, yes, I, I will tend to agree with where, where we want football to go, we have to network and improve the region as a whole. Right. It was really good touching base with you and um, we wish you all the best in the upcoming CFU finals. Well, the championship round, really. And well, I, well, I, thanks for having me and, and I certainly appreciate talking to you and anytime um, I'm happy to talk to, to Antigua Radio and to, to share the insights of professional football and, and, and Caribbean football as a whole. Right. And I, I think this is the step in the right direction because we are we all will learn from each other eventually anyway. Right. Take care, appreciate. No problem. Take it easy. Right. And, um, well, you know what? As I, hey, it's 10 o'clock right now. We're not-